Thank you again for having me over here with you, inshallah. Uh, it was very interesting that some college students are, they want to talk about the Day of Judgment. I will be repeating this word, Yawm al Qiyamah, okay? Yawm al Qiyamah is the Day of Judgment. Usually people, they talk probably about different topics, and not everybody is very comfortable with talking about the Day of Judgment. It's somehow, it's, it's a scary thing. But actually, the Prophet وسلم, he did remind us in many places and telling us, min dikri You should definitely uh, remember the one who destroy all the pleasures, and that's death. Because once a person that is dying, and all his luxuries, all his pleasures, all his desires, everything is, is done, is finished. So you say you should remember Hadimul that You should remember that all the time. Not only that, you realize that in many places in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always, always bringing the Iman of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Iman in the Day of Judgment, all the time. Iman kana yarjullaha wal yawmal Those people that they have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have hope also on the Day of Judgment, in many places. Or like in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَمَا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ بِالْفِقُونَ وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُؤْمِنُونَ Always repeating the word of Qiyamah, repeating the word of Qiyamah, subhanAllah. Let me say that there is two types of Qiyamah. Qiyamah Sughra and Qiyamah Kubra. The big, the small Qiyamah and the big Qiyamah. This question was asked to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he answered, saying, "Ida mat ibn Adam qamat qiyamat." Once the son of Adam, a human being, died, his qiyamah started, and that's his first qiyamah. Because once you die, you are definitely are going to see what is where are you going to be, either in the jannah or in the nar, right away. Once the person died. We will see that, subhanAllah. So we'll talk a little bit more about the first qiyam, inshallah. Um, there is a beautiful hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We will go through that hadith just to understand, to understand how the first qiyam will happen, subhanAllah. Uh, Al-Barra ibn Azib narrated in a very long hadith, say, one time kharajna ma Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We went out with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi janazat ya rajuli min al-ansar for the janaza, for the failure, or for a person for a ansari, a sahabi from the ansar so we get to the qabr of that person so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he was sitting mustaqbil al-qibla he was facing the qibla subhanallah and we were all sitting around him subhanallah then uh, he said to all of them istaidu billahi min adab al-qabr Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you from the punishment of the qabr, of the grave, subhanAllah. Then the story started. It's a story probably that would happen to all of us. Definitely it would happen to all of us. What, what's going to happen exactly? So he said, subhanAllah. Inna al-abda al-mu'mina idha kana fi al-qita'in min al-dunya wa iqbalin ala al-akhirah. Any kind of person, a human being, a abd mu'min, a believer. So once now he is departing from this life, and he is now going to be welcome in the hereafter. Subhanallah. What happened exactly? Once a person starts feeling the death, 
he will he will realize that this is death. He will definitely realize that. Subhanallah. Then he said, and let me take also a few minutes to talk about this moment of death. We call it, you know, the Sakaratul uh, Mount, the moment of death. You know, most of the people, most of the people, they got disturbed, they got scared. They don't know what to do. And then say, oh, I'm dying. I'm leaving everything behind me. My money, my account, my wife, my children, my business, my, my, my. It is that coming. So you don't know what to do. And then it doesn't come to your mind anything else but only you're so scared. This is a human nature. You realize, I'm dying now. I cannot go back. In the other side, there are some people, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gave them the tabat. He gave them the tranquility, if you want. And it's the opposite. It's the opposite. They don't get disturbed. They don't get scared. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them the tabat. Uh, let's just give some few examples about these people. The example of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he realized that the Malak of Maud came to him, and definitely he came to him. And Aisha narrated, right, the Allah narrated this hadith. So he was just raising his eyes up and his finger, and he was repeating this word. I want to join my Lord. I want to join my Lord. I want to join my Lord. Actually, he was given the choice to stay alive in this life as a prophet, as a king, or to join Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he chose to join Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he knows what is there. It is much better than this dunya. So that's why Allah gave him the tabat. Another example, you may say that's a prophet. The example of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu also, when he was dying and Aisha radiallahu anhu also was there, and she started crying and actually saying some poetry, some poems. So Abu Bakr, actually when the person is dying, we're supposed to comfort him, we're supposed to tell him la ilaha illallah, we're supposed to tell him don't be scared, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, you know, is Rahim, is Rahman, has forgiveness, so don't worry about it. But at this moment, Abu Bakr, he is the one saying to Aisha, La taquli hakada ya ibnati. Don't say like this, oh my daughter. Bal quli, but say, Wajaat sakratul mauti bil haq, dalika ma kunta minhu tahid. But say, this is the sakra of mauti, he's coming. You are always trying to avoid this, but now it's coming. So the tabat was to him at that moment. The example of Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu also, it is unique. We know that Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, he was going, he was actually for the prayer, and somebody, Majusi, he stopped him from the back. So he fainted, because he didn't hit him only once, but many, many times to make sure that he really gonna die. But anyway, after a while, Umar al-Khattab, he woke up. So when, uh, the first thing that he said, help someone Muslim more. The first thing that he was concerned about at this moment, and he know that he is dying and say, did the Muslims offer their prayers? Tabat is given to this person. He was not scared. He knew what is, what is happening. But with hope, also and fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the example of Ali ibn Abi Talib, the same and so on so. He was going for Salat al-Fajr, you know, to lead the Fajr prayer, and then he was also killed. Anyway, I, I will close this with a, another statement with another uh, person. He was not a Sahabi, but he was Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. He was actually the Khalifa in the time of the Umaris. But he was a, such a very beautiful person that some of the people even called him the fifth Khalifa. It says in the story, subhanAllah, that the people were around him. And at that moment, he told him, you can just leave. He told all his family, you just go. So once they left, and they were just listening to what's happening, you see, I can see some faces that I never saw before. This is not the faces of a human, and this is not the faces of jinn. So, with light. So these are the angels. And what, at that moment, his wife was answering, subhanAllah, to, to see him. What she found him? She found him reciting this ayah. That is the beauty, the last one. We will give it to the people that they are not after corruption, they are not after arrogance, but the aqibah, the good ending will be for the good people. This is how it ends with certain people. 
And that's what the hadith said. For Abdul Mu'min, this is how it works. But exactly, we'll see the details in this hadith, subhanAllah. So he said, once a person is dying, he will see some angels or some faces, let's say. Malaikatun min as bidul wujuh, ka'anna wujuhahum shams. Their faces are so shiny, just like the sun. For every single person, this will happen. But for the Abdul Mu'min, the believer, subhanAllah. So they will sit a little bit far away from him, subhanAllah. And we, they have with them kafn wa hanu. Kafn is the clothes that, you know, we, we wrap in the person, and when a person dies, mostly it's white, should be white. And hanu is some kind of things that we also do to the person who passed away. And at that moment, then Malakul Mount will come, the angel of death, Azra'il, subhanAllah. He will come close to him, tumma yajlisu inda ra'si. Then he will sit close to his head, subhanAllah. Then he will say, Ya ayyatuha al-nafsu al-mutma'inna, arji'i ila rabbihi radiyatan mardiyya. Now for the nafsu al-mutma'inna, the good one. So the angels of that will say, Ya ayyatuha al-nafsu al-mutma'inna. Oh, this nafs that has tranquility, the good one. The beautiful one, you are going back to your Lord. Allah is the one who gave you this soul, Allah is taking it back, subhanAllah. So he will say, Ukhruji ila maqfiratin min Allahi wa ridwan. You come back from the body of that person to the forgiveness of Allah and to the rida, to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fatasilu kama tasilu al qatra. So the soul will come out just like there is some water is leaking from somewhere. In that way, subhanAllah. Once the soul comes out, the angel of death will take it, subhanAllah. Now, at that moment, the other angels that we were mentioning before, sitting all the way in the back, once the angel of death will take the soul, they will take it from him also. SubhanAllah. Then they will take this soul up to the sama, to the heaven, subhanAllah. So once they get there, in every single sama, in every single heaven, they will see some angels. They will meet some angels, subhanAllah. And then they open the doors for them. They open the doors for them, subhanAllah. So, and at that moment, that soul is giving such a beautiful smell that all those angels will ask, who is this person? Man fulan ibn fulan, who is this person? And they will call him with the best of his names. You say this is the name, this is a certain person. So they will give him salam, and they will bless him, and they will make dua for him. And the soul will be going up and up and up until the subhanAllah reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So once it gets there, subhanAllah, to at that certain level, subhanAllah, the sama'u sabi'ah, the seven heaven, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Uktubu kitab abdi fi aliyin. Write the book of my servant, of my slave in aliyin. It's a daraja, it's a level, it's such a beautiful level. May Allah make all of us among these people. Then he will say, Thumma yuqal a'iduhu ila al ard. Then take him back to the earth. Take him back to the earth. So the angels again will be taking the soul back all the way to the earth and then they will put it in the body again. At that moment, at that moment, the person can hear the sound of the feet or the shoes of the people that they are, you know, they brought him to the graveyard and they are leaving back, subhanAllah. At that moment, subhanAllah, two angels will come to him and they will start asking him. This is the questions of Nakir and Munkir. So they will ask him, Man Rabbuk, who is your Lord? For the people that Allah gave them the tabat. Allah will give them the tablet. They will know what to say. So he will say, Allah Rabbi, Allah is my Lord, subhanAllah. So they will ask him other questions. Uh, what is your deen? He will say in Islam. And he will say, or who is this man that was sent to you? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was my messenger. So I ask him, what is your, your deeds? You say, Kuntu aqra'u al-Qur'an. Let's say just an example. I used to read the Qur'an, I used to give the company of the Qur'an, and so on, so on, so on, all that, subhanAllah. 
فَيُنَادِي مُنَادِي مِنَ السَّمَاءِ You hear a sound from the heaven saying, قَدْ صَدَقَ عَبْدِي Indeed, my servant is saying the truth. فَأَفْرِشُوهُ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ وَأَلْبِسُوهُ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ وَأَفْتَحُوا لَهُ بَابًا إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ Make his place where he's going to sleep a part of the Jannah. And give him the clothes of the Jannah. Subhanallah. And open a door for him from the Jannah. So he will see the Jannah and he will enjoy the Jannah. And a person, Rajulun, subhanAllah, like the hadith says, Rajulun Hassan al Waji, Hassan al Tiyar, Ayyib al Raiha, a person with beautiful face, beautiful clothes, with very nice smell, he will tell him, Abshir bin Ladiya Sorro. I'm giving you the good news of the things that you are really going to be happy with. So he will tell him, Abshir bin Ridwanillah. It is the Ridwan of Allah, it is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he will tell him, and you will tell him, Hada amaluk. And you will ask him, sorry, you will tell him, who are you? You will ask this person with a beautiful face, beautiful smell, beautiful clothes. You say, who are you? SubhanAllah. Because I see that your face is so beautiful. You will tell him, Ana amaluk. I am your good deeds. I am your good deeds. I'm coming over here with you and I'm going to give you company. SubhanAllah. So, and then you will tell him, look. And you will open a door for him. And you will tell him, that was your place in the hellfire. But because of your good deeds, this is your place in the Jannah. So you will open a door for Jannah. So you will see it so beautiful. So he will say, Ya Rabbi, aqim is sa He will say, Oh my Lord, I want you, you know, I want the Qiyamah to start right now. Because now he knows where he is going to be, subhanAllah. This is one part, which is all of us who would love to be that kind of person. On the other side, the other person who is not a believer, he was a bad person. He's a violent, an unjust, an unfair person. Same thing will happen to him. And we'll go again over the hadith, subhanAllah. So he will tell him, eight angels, they look very harsh, very tough. Their faces are so dark. And they have in with them some kind of clothes, but it's like made of fire. They will also sit far away from him, and they are just looking at him. And then the angel of death, Azrael, will come and he will sit close to his head. But what he will say, he will try to pull his soul out. Now this person, he knows, he knows what he was doing. So the soul of a non-believer, it doesn't work in that way. It says, it goes in the whole body of the person, in his eyes, in his hands, and everywhere. It doesn't want to come out. The soul knows what he's waiting for. So what he did, so Fayyan tells you, he would put it very hard, in a such a way, a way. say, oh khuruji, come out, ayyatuha nafsul khabita, such a bad soul, ila ghadabin min Allah, to an anger and a curse from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the same thing again will happen, once the soul would come, those angels, they will take it, and they will try to take it out. In every single place, whenever single uh, sama, they will find all the doors closed. لا تفتح لهم أبواب السماء. They knock the door. Nobody, nobody wants to open the doors. Not only that. In the riwayah, the, the narration of this hadith say, those angels they will ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, Oh Allah, don't make this soul come in through us or through our doors. Subhanallah. And by any place that soul will be passing with such a bad smell, the people say, Who is this person? And they will curse him and curse him and curse him until the soul goes up all the way to the seventh heaven. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also he will say about that person, he will call him with the worst of his names. And then he will say to him, subhanAllah, take him to Sijin. It is a level in the hellfire. Take him back. I don't want him. The hadith says also that the angels will let him go down. Like they were carrying the, the soul and they will let the soul go down. So it will go with that speed all the way from the seventh heaven, all the way to that body, to the person. At that moment, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he recited the ayah saying, وَمَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَكَأَنَّمَا خَرَّ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فَتَخَطَّفُهُ الطَّيْرِ أَوْ تَهْوِي بِهِ الْرِيحُ فِي مَكَانٍ صَحِيقٍ It's like it's falling all the way from the seventh heaven, all the way to the body, to, to that person. So again, the soul goes to the body of that person. 
and he could also hear the sound of the feet or the shoes of the people that he brought him, subhanAllah, there. So at that moment, the two angels would come to him and start asking him the same questions. Man Rabbuk, who is your Lord? That person now is confused, he's disturbed, he's scared, he's nervous. Ha, what, what, what? Just like the hadith, ha, ha. He, he doesn't understand. He say, I don't know. They ask him, who is your, what's your deen? Uh, wh what are you talking about? I don't know who is Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I don't know. So they will tell him, la darayta wa la samayta. You should not hear, you should not even know. And then when he says, they will start hitting him. SubhanAllah. Then that angel, those angels that they were sitting there, I'm sorry, the, another angel will come with such an ugly face, with such an ugly smell. He will come to him and he will tell him, let me show you. So he will show him his place in the Jannah, who's supposed to be. Say, that's supposed to be your place. But because of your deeds, this is going to be your place, the hellfire. So who are you? You're such this and that. He say, I am your deeds. And this is what you deserve and they all open a door for him from the hellfire, subhanAllah. This is actually where it happened in the Qabr, and it will continue like that. Moving a little bit, I said this is what we call al qiyamatu al-Sura, the first Qiyamah, and every single person you will be going through this Qiyamah, subhanAllah. Now the Qiyamah al-Kubr, in the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, narrated by Abu Hurairah, radiallahu anhu arda that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Israfi he's the angel of the mountain the soul and from that day he's just waiting for the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to blow in the soul in the mountain so then the qiyamah will start so he will be given the order to blow in the soul subhanallah at that moment everything will finish any people that they will remain at that time they will die Israfil, subhanAllah, he will do that. At that moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call Azrael, the angel of death, and he will tell him, Man baqi, who is left? He will tell him, Everybody is done except Baqita and Al Hayu Ladi la Yamut. You the one, Al Hay, you will never die. Wa Baqitu Anna, angel of death. Wa Jibreel, wa Mikael, wa Israfil, wa Hamalatul Arsh and the angels who carry the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, فَلْيَمُتْ إِسْرَافِي إِسْرَافِي will die. And he will tell him also, فَلْيَمُتْ جِبْرِيلُ وَمِيْكَائِلُ Jibreel and Mikael also will die. SubhanAllah. The angel will go, will take the soul of Jibreel and Mikael and will come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling him and asking him, Allah will ask him, Man baqi? Allah of course knows, but this is the hadith what he says. Say, Baqita and Al Hayu Ladila Yamut. Wa Baqitu Anna and me and Hamalatul Arsh. So Allah will order him, even the Kail of the Arsh will die. Anyway, make it short. So we'll, we'll come to him and we'll tell him again in the last one, Man baqi, who is left? Say, Baqita and Al Hayu Ladila Yamut. You the one who doesn't die. Wa Baqitu Anna, me, your slave. So Allah will tell him, you are one of my servants. I created you for what you saw. Famut, you will die. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will repeat the sin. Man baqi, who is left? No answer. It says in the hadith, Allah will repeat this question. Man baqi, man baqi, man baqi, no answer. Then he will say, Aina al muluk wa aina abna al muluk. Where are the kings and where are their children? All the Tugat, all the dictators, all the Abadimi, anybody, everybody is Finnish. Right? So Allah will repeat this. Aynal Muluk, where are they? They all finish. Like the ayah says, Kullu man alayha fan, wa yabqa waj wa rabbika dul jalal wal ikram. Everybody will finish, will die. Whatever your status. A good person, bad person, a rich man, a poor man, you have a high this or not. Everybody will be done. Where? All under the ground. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again will repeat, Man baqi, man baqi. And he will repeat, subhanAllah. Then Allah will answer to himself. 
Lemon, he will ask this question. Lemon il mulku al yawm. To whom is all the power, all the kingdom today? And nobody will answer. Allah will answer. Lillahi al wahid al qahar. Everything belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, this is the moment that we call of the bat, right? It starts again with another nafqa, with another blue. So Allah will make Israfil coming back to life. And he will order him to blow again in the mountain. So he will blow. Again, the people will start coming back, subhanAllah. But that's one of the most horrible times for every single human being, except some people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save him, Allah make us among them. At that moment, just like it says, the people will start coming out. But some people, they will be standing on their feet. Some people, they will be walking on their heads. Actually, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, once he narrated this hadith and he said that some people yuhsharuna ala wujuhim on their faces. One of the Sahaba asked him how a person could walk on his face. He said, إِنَّ الَّذِي أَمْشَاهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَرْجُلِهِمْ قَادِرٌ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يُمَشِيهِمْ عَلَىٰ وُجُوهِمْ The one who created them and he was able to make them walking on their feet, he's able to make them walking on their faces. SubhanAllah. And then he said, on that day, SubhanAllah, and this is how the things will be. That the people will be hufatun urat. The people they will be with no barefoot. No shoes, of course. Nobody cares about that. And no clothes. Actually, when Rasulullah said that Aisha, his wife, radiallahu anhu, Arda asked him, يُبْعَتُ الْبْلَاسُ عُرَاتًا I mean, الرِّجَالُ وَالنِّسَاءِ يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَىٰ بَعْدِ Men and women looking at each other and they have no clothes. Say, لا ليس هكذا يا ابن الصديق. No, it's not like this. Oh, you, the daughter of Siddiq. The hell of that day, this, that day is so scary that nobody will think about looking to each other. The people have some other things that they are concerned about. They are not going to be concerned about anything like that, subhanAllah. Moving on, it says at that moment, now all the people are waiting. Then the sun will come very close to the people. In one hadith it says, mean, probably a mile, right? A mile, imagine the sun is coming so close to the heads of a human being, only a mile. So the people will start sweating, sweat and sweat, you know, and the summer of the people. But imagine on that day, فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ Some of them, the Arab, the sweat will come up to their, so to their ankles. And some up to their, subhanAllah, up to their knees. And some, and some say, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَلْجِبُهُ الْعَرَقُ الْجَانَةِ Some of them, the Arab will come up to the top. At that moment, it's getting very and very scary, more and more and more, subhanAllah. And the people will start saying, oh, talking to the angels, just tell your Lord to finish us. Just tell your Lord just to send us to the hellfire. But you cannot wait. Waiting and waiting, I'm saying, for hundreds and hundreds of years, people are just suffering like that, subhanAllah. And that's why it says in the story, subhanAllah, about the first ayah of Surah Al-Hajj, يَا أَيُّ النَّاسُ اتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّ زَلْزَلَةَ السَّاعَةِ لَشَيْءٌ عَظِيمٌ Oh you, the people, fear the day of the earthquake, of the day of judgment. يَوْمَ تَرَوْنَهَا On that day, when you see it, تَدْهَلُ كُلُّ مُرْضِعَةٍ عَمَّا أَرْضَعَتْ وَتَدَعُ كُلُّ ذَاتِ حَمْلٍ حَمْلَهَا وَتَرَى النَّاسَ السُّكَارَةً وَمَا هُمْ بِسُّكَارَةً وَلَكِنَّ عَذَابَ اللَّهِ شَدِيمٌ On that day, تَدْهَلُ كُلُّ مُرْضِعَةٍ عَمَّا أَرْضَعَتْ Every woman will not even care about the baby that she was breastfeeding, about her kids. it is only this punishment. It's so horrible. That's why the people are feeling like that, subhanAllah. People are waiting and waiting for hundreds of years. When I say this, there are some people that they are not going to suffer from that. There are a lot of people that they are not going to suffer from this. They will be saved. They will be saved from all this, subhanAllah. But moving on about this picture that I'm trying to describe. And I'm saying, because if I say that in two, three minutes, 
on that day, and I'm saying it's hundreds and hundreds of years that the people be waiting. At that moment, subhanAllah, then the people start running. They will go to Adam. Yeah, Adam, you are our father. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do something for us. Adam will say, Inna Rabbi qad ghadiban shadida. My Lord today is very, very angry, and I cannot do anything. So they leave him. They will go to Ruh, alayhi salam. They will go to Ibrahim, alayhi salam. They will go to Musa, alayhi salam. And so on, and so on. And each one of them, he will say, Nafsi, Nafsi, only myself. Only myself. Nobody cares about anybody else. And that's what the ayah will say, subhanAllah. يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ A person will run away from his brother, from his father, from his mother, from his children, from anybody else. Now we have this relation, you say, you know, I am here, I support you. But on that day, it is completely different. I'm saying even the mother doesn't care about the son, and even the brother doesn't care about his brother. Why? The adab is so horrible that the people cannot stand it. At that moment, the, loss, uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he will, they will, people, they will go to him and they will ask him. Ask the Lord to save us or help us. So it says in the hadith, Then I will go until I will go close to the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I fall down. For a while, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask him, okay, Yes, raise your hand and is al talk and ask me and I will give you. Rasulullah said, فَيَفْتَحُ اللَّهُ عَلَيَّ بِمَحَامِ so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me the tawfiq to say something so beautiful to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Rasulullah will start asking him, Ummati, Ummati, Ummati. My nation, my nation, my nation. Actually this is something very amazing about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that probably may build up this love for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah said in one hadith, لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍّ دَعْوَةٌ مُسْتَجَابَةٌ for every single prophet, he was given a chance to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for whatever he wants. So in all the prophets and messengers, they did ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They did. For example, <coughs> Sulaiman asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbi Habli, give me uh, some kind of power kingdom that is not given to anybody before me. And so on, Ibrahim alayhi salam said, Rabbi jal hadha al-balad amin al warsuq ahlahu min al-tamarat. So he did ask a blessing for that piece of land which is Mecca al mukarram and around it, and for his children. But for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, لِكُلِّ نَبِيِّ دَعْوَةُ مِنْ سَجَابَةٍ Every single person, he asked a da'wah. And he will be answered. But except me, I saved it. For my, what? لِأُمَّتِ For my ummah. For my people. This is also shows the mercy and the beauty of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He did not say, I'm saving this for myself or for my children or for my brothers or for my sisters or for my father or for my uncle Abu Talib or for anybody else. But he said, I saved it for my ummah. By the way, probably all of us, just a reminder that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, just a couple of days before he passed away, when he was coming back from visiting the Shahada of Uhud, he was actually crying. So some of the Sahaba asked him, what makes you cry? He said, I missed my brothers. So they said to him, Aren't we your brothers, O Rasulullah? No, you are my companions. No, but my brothers are some other people. They will be coming after me. They will believe in me, although they did not see me. So please, he said, from that day, say my salam to all of them from today, subhanAllah. Going back to the day of judgment, at that moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will grant the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-shafa'ah. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he will talk on behalf of a lot of people to enter Jannah. Rasulullah at that moment, he will be around the place called al Hawl. al Hawl. Probably we heard that surah, al kawthar inna a'tainak al kawthar So it's the Hawl of Kawthar, the fountain of Kawthar. He will be there, giving the people water to drink. And on that day, having a drink is something 
difference, subhanAllah. So all the people, they will see Rasulullah, and they will rush to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They can drink from his hand. It says, if you drink from that water of kawthar, you will never get thirsty anymore, or any or any. But at that moment, some people, they will be stopped from going to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are from his ummah, but some angels, they will stop him. At that moment, Rasulullah will talk again on their behalf. These are the people from my ummah. Why you are stopping them? The angel will say, You don't know what these people they were doing after you. Yeah, they have the names of Muslims. They have the names of the followers. But they did not follow any of your sunnah. They did not follow any of your teaching. So, they will be rejected. They will be thrown away, subhanAllah. I'm saying about this part and the other part for the good people from the very first day from the very first day they are not going to have any problems they are not going to suffer anything just give an example of that in one of the hadith say حول العرش منابر من نور around the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is on the day of judgment some places where the people can see but these are made of light around the arch of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will be offered for some people. And these people are not prophets and are not angels and are not from the shuhada and not from the awliya. But these are for what? For some special people. And then they name some people like them. Who are they? Who are these people? SubhanAllah. In one of them people that yajruna fi hawa'ijinas. They go to serve the people. They go to serve the people for no other interest but only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the day when there is no shame and the people they will be suffering, there will be some people that do have the shame from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anyway, uh, going just further, on the same time, some people they will be enjoying in Jannah. Jannah is levels also. Jannah is levels. And if we take the time to talk about every level, it is something beautiful, amazing, but it's very long. But just give you just a small example. Between each level of Jannah, from the first one to the second one, it's like a person is traveling for 100 years. So the first one is so beautiful. But when you go to the second one, and the third one, and so on, so it is something amazing that we cannot even describe. Actually, the hadith of Rasulullah when he describes Jannah, say, فِيهَا مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُدْنٌ سَمِعَتْ what is in the Jannah? It is something that nobody saw before. And you cannot see it in this life. Whatever you see, it's not Jannah. No, no, it's not, nothing compared to Jannah. When you say, OK, I cannot see it, but probably I can, somebody can tell me. Nobody can tell me. Nobody can describe it for you. Because it's not like a human thing that we do have. Yes, you, you, you know that there's food. But there is, there is a big difference between food and food. No. Probably sometimes you start dreaming, you say, just thinking, probably this way and this way, so it's such, that's not, that's nothing comparing to what is in Jannah. That's nothing comparing to the Jannah. Actually, Rasulullah SAW mentioned that hadith, say, if the people, they will know what is Jannah exactly, they cannot sleep. You know, when someone tells you about something and you start describing this and that and that and that, it has this and it has that, you cannot wait, I just want to go there. Uh, I can't pay any price for that, just let me go. You know, and you are ready to, you know, borrow the money or whatever, that just wanna go to that place. But Jannah is something unique. Something that you did not, nobody saw before. But who made it? It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anyway, uh, when I was talking about Jannah, in the same time, I will say about the levels of Jannah and how we can get into the levels of Jannah. And I, I just say right now that we cannot describe it. We cannot describe it. But the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa tell us some, some clue about the Jannah. Uh, something that we can just know about the Jannah. Uh, in one time, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَصَوْتُ أَحَدِكُمْ or لَمَكَانُ صَوْتِ أَحَدِكُمْ فِي الْجَنَّةِ You know, the place where someone put his stick, let's say, in Jannah, is bigger and wider and more beautiful than the dunya wa mafiya, than the whole dunya. So now we can imagine 
probably we cannot imagine how big, how huge, how beautiful is the Jannah. So that's how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa described it. In the same time, when you talk about the hellfire, the punishment is, is something completely different that you cannot also imagine. Yes, the hadith it talks about it, it has the fire, it has this and that, but this is just a way to bring it close to our mind, to understand it. Because what is in the hereafter is something different. You know, the fire of a human being that the human being is able to make, probably you can imagine when there's some huge big fire, or the fire of a bomb or something, it's huge. But that's made by human. The fire that made by the one who made the human is completely different. But we just bring in the idea a little bit closer. Anyway, let me just start this and pray to close it, subhanAllah. And I would say, the Jinnah al Nar, there is a very beautiful book, but actually it's not translated to English. It's a book of Imam Ibn al Qayyim al Jawziya, called Had al Arwah fi Bilad al Afrah. So you see, the guidance, the guidance of uh, al arwah of the souls on the places of the joy and happiness. He did actually describe, especially the Jannah, and he described every details about the Jannah. The places, the names, the levels, even the ground, even what the people will eat, even the people what they will do, and so on, so on, so on. I will close over here. Astaghfirullah alaykum jamee'ah wa mineen. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Do you have any comments or questions? What do you mean social life? Like, you know, everybody like greeting each other, meeting, going to people's house, or brothers hanging out. Yeah. Yes, it, it is actually described in the Jannah that the people, like uh, the Ayat the Qur'ani had described that. It, for example, it, it mentioned that the people, they will be there with their the people that they love, with the, their brothers, with their sisters, with their wives, uh, with their husbands, and so on. So they will, they will say, well, malaika The angels will be visiting them, and they will be visiting each other. And there is a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu also mentioned about that, that about a Sahabi, even the name is not very well mentioned in the hadith, but this Sahabi, actually he came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said to him this, he said, uh, that I really love you so much. Just look at this. Say, and whenever I am home, I just, you know, remember I come to see you. I cannot wait. That's how much love. Then he said to him, but today I was home. Then I remembered and I said to myself that Rasulullah will be in Jannah and inshallah I will be in Jannah. He's a Sahabi. But he said, but I'm not going to be able to be at your level. You will be in A'la Ali, in the Firdaus, and I will be probably in the first heaven. So he said, from now I, I feel that I'm going to miss you. I'm not going to be able to see you whenever I want. Now I'm home, I just come to the door and ask to see you, but there I cannot see you. So he felt that he would miss Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in there. See, this is how much. So Rasulullah didn't have a word to say to him, but he was waiting until the wahid was revealed to him. Like we know, in huwa illa wahyun yuha, doesn't say things from his own. And the ayah was, وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ Whoever, obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Rasul. فَأُولَٰئِكَ, these people definitely will be مَعَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا these people, they will be what? With who? With the Nabi'een, with the Siddiqeen, with the Shuhada, with the Salihin, such a good company. The Sahaba said, with that ayah, we were never so happy with an ayah like that ayah. Because we know, oh, okay, in the hereafter, probably our good deeds were not going to be that. But because of our love and our obedience to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we will be with him. So we can see him, we can talk to him. And imagine that if in Jannah you are going to be the neighbor of Abu Bakr or Umar, or Aisha or Khadija and these beautiful people that you heard about, subhanAllah. Inshallah. Any other questions? You could be a comment, that's fine. Yes. I can hear you very well. One of the sisters has a question. Uh huh. Do you know what it's doing? Do I know? Okay, Sajin, it's, it's a level, I would say, dark in Jahannam. 
in Jahannam. Okay. The description of Sijil, what is it? It tells us exactly what they will be eating, what they will be drinking. Uh, and in the Quran, it says that they will, they will be thirsty, so they will ask for water, so the water will be kalmuhli yashwil wushu, so they will be given this water, but the water will burn their faces. It would cut their stomach and all that. So this is just a level that describes Sijil. Okay? You should know about it. Yes? You said after you described like the whole um, how like the believer and the nominee how they will go through the process of going through heaven or and coming back down to so after that whole process, what is it? Do they just wait do they wait on the day of judgment? Okay. We the, after that after that when a person is in the grave, like you say this yeah. is the first PM. So anybody, any person who is in the grave, that is only the body yeah. of a human. And the body does not feel any pain. Right? It is actually the soul. So the soul will be taken to a place called Al Barzakh. This is now a knowledge of the MC that we don't know that much about it, right? Right? So this is the Ilmul Ghaib. Barzakh is the place where all the souls are. In the Barzakh, it is heaven and Nar. And that's the hadith of Rasulullah where he said that any person, once he died, his qabr will be either Rawdatul Miryad al Jannah or Hufratul Min Hufar Jahannam. So the grave of a person, probably when you pass by, you see just a cover, right? Probably it could be built in a beautiful way or in such a way. But the person inside, he is either enjoying it just like in Jannah, or he is being punished continuously just like he is in the hellfire. Until the day of judgment. I'm sorry? Until the day, until the until day. The day of judgment. So the adab of qabr it is, with all the hadith it does mention. And actually there's a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu that he was passing by, and then he passed by two qabrs, two uh, graves, and he said, إِنَّهُمَا لَا يُعَذَّبَانِ وَمَا يُعَذَّبَانِ فِي كَثِيرٍ So he said, differently they are being punished, and they are being punished for certain reasons, not something big. فَأَمَّا أَحَدُهُمَا فَكَانَ لَا يَسْتَبْعُ مِنَ الْبَوْلِ وَأَمَّا التَّانِ فَكَانَ يَمْشِي بِالنَّمِينَ One of them, you know what he used to do? He used not to do his cleaning. He was not clean. He goes, he used the bathroom, but he doesn't wash himself properly. And the angel don't like it. So he's being punished for that. And the other one, what he does, he will always go to the people and spread in rumors. So you like, if your name Muhammad, Muhammad said this and that and that, and go to the other person and person and person. So this person, they will be definitely punished in the Qabr, continuously, no stop. And there are so many ahadith that talks about that, that yes, there is Adam al Qabr. And that's why the Prophet Muhammad it says that in every single prayer, he used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about to put out to become an adab in qabr fitnat al mahya wa fitnat al mamat wa fitnat al mazid al dajjal so he will always ask Allah Allah protect me from the punishment of the qabr sorry no go ahead now you said that those like those who are in Actually, from the very first day, once the person died, he will realize that this is his place. Either it's going to be theirs or that. But you may ask the other question, say, if you already know, once you will be raised again, you will forget about everything. You're not going to remember anything. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? For, once the person die, he will know his PM. He will know he's going to be where, right? And he will either be this place or the other place. So you may ask the question that if that's the case, so how are you talking about the hisab and the iqab, right? That will come after. I would say once the person will be raised back, he's not going to remember anything from the qabr. So we'll start from fresh. We'll start from, and that's why the hadith talks about it even in the Quran. It says when a person comes back on the day of judgment, we'll ask him, come live it. How long do you stay? He probably stay for a day or half a day. So he's not going to feel that he stayed for thousands and thousands of years. Even like Adam alayhi salam, now if he comes back, we we'll ask him, probably he stayed for a day or a, because when, when a person dies, it's just like he's sleeping. Just like he's sleeping. So, so the day of judgment, we're going to be like, we're just there like day or I'm sorry? On the day of judgment, when we were asked how long we were there, we're just going to be like you, a day. You, you're, not, you're not going to know how long you stayed in the house. Nobody would know. Yes. Um, if somebody is in the lowest level of Jannah and the Prophet will be at the top, so would there be remorse or like unhappiness from that person that like he would regret it, like not be happy in that level or something? Because not because not this is the Prophet. No, no, it's not. 
It's not in that sense. No. Actually, the people of Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you mentioned about them, they say, they will not feel any pain, they will not feel any sorrow, they will not, they will not, they will not, they will not. So a person who is in the first level, he is going to think that this is the best thing that could be. And nothing is better than that. Nothing. And the second level, the same, and so on, so on, so on, so So nobody will have that feeling that, you know, this is better, and this is better, and this is, no, you're not. But of course, it is much better. We know that. But inside, because Allah promised that the people of Jannah, they're not going to have that feeling at all, that feel that something is missing or something is minus. No, you feel just like you are, you know, I just give it an example of the human being, you know, in our life right now. Uh, probably, let's say, if you go to some poor country, right? And then the richest people at that place that they are feeling some, having some very beautiful life. They, they are not going to feel bad because they don't know what's happening in some other countries and how the people are living. Some they have their own airplanes and so on. They don't know about that. So, and this is just at the human level. So when it comes to the Umar, like the unseen, it, it's completely different. Nobody will feel that in, in the general because Allah promised that. Yes. Uh, I can hear you. If you're bored in general, very good. <laughs> you see, no, no, it's a very good, good question. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the Quran about this also. And then he said that the per people in Jannah, they're not going to feel thirsty. They're not going to feel hungry. They're not going to feel the pain. They're not going to feel sleepy. They, 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 nothing. In the same thing, they're not going to feel bored. Because who created this feeling inside of you? It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those feelings are not going to have them. OK? I, even the food, it says when you eat the food, you're never going to feel that your stomach is full. You keep eating it, but you're not going to feel. You're not going to feel thirsty. But you do have also feeling the pleasure of eating and drinking and so. People don't use the bathroom in the agenda. There's no such thing, subhanAllah. So there's a lot of things. And people don't get old. They don't get angry. They don't get tired. So uh, the agenda is something. Different. That's why you say when we talk and talk about jannah, no, it, it's something different. That's why we said in the beginning of the hadith, ma la ra'ad. We, we don't know. But Allah promises jannah is something unique. You cannot know what is it. It's so beautiful. May Allah make us a man. I also heard like there's like a day, like Friday, you'll meet at like a market and people from like all the levels of jannah will be there. Yeah. So just kind of like you won't be able to see them every day. You can see them on Friday on that market. Is that true? I would not say it's not true or if it's true. There are a lot of ahadith that talks about that matter, but the thing also that there is a lot of ahadith that are not attentive. And when it comes to this ghaybiyat, if the word does not come from the word, from the mouth of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you cannot take it. it it's something ghaybi, unseen, tawqifi we say. If it's not coming through the Prophet, how you would know? No. So yes, I, I, I also read some stories like that, but these are not Real. But it could be. How Allah would make it. Yes? When we die, do we be with our families after we go to Jannah? Like, do we say with our own family that we had in our actual life, or do we get your family? Uh, yes. Yeah, that is. Actually, the, the Quran mentioned that about, about that, that the people will be with their families, but if you don't like somebody from your family, you may not be with that person. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yes, actually, even the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned about like every husband and wife they will be together in the year after. Um, the question will be if if the man is going to this place and the woman is going to another place, how they are going to be? No, Allah subhanahu wa taala will not. A good person will not be with a bad person in that year after. But yes, Allah subhanahu wa taala will. And there's another thing which is very important also, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not give you the feeling that you are missing somebody. So you will be with the people that you love. And that's why the hadith, like I mentioned before, it says, al mar'u ma'am al ahab You definitely will be in Jannah with the people that you love. So you're not going to miss anybody at all. You definitely will be with the people that you, 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 you're going to love. And that also there's a shafa'ah. You know, some of your family, they could have shafa'ah for you to bring you to Jannah. To bring you to a higher level, that's also possible, subhanAllah. And there is a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioning that somebody already died. Okay, so he knew his level in Jannah. It was, let's say, first level. So 
after they did all the counting and then, okay, this is your good deeds, so you, you, this is your level. So after a while, the angel came to him and said, oh, you are going to take you to a higher level. He said, how is that possible? Because I've already died, there's no good deed. He said, had that before the dua'i This is what the reward of your son is making dua for you. So when a person died, still there will be some good deeds going to his account from a sadaqah shariah that he did, give a sadaqah, bin the masjid, or he has a good son or daughter, and continuously they are making dua on his name, inshallah. Let's say a woman has been widowed like five times. What do you mean with the Very good question. No, very good question. Actually, she will be with the person that she loved the most among them, or the person that will be at her level. So the five husbands, let's say, or ten husbands even, so if you put all of them, they're not going to be all in the same stairs. They're not going to be all in the same place. And then who is closer to her, right? Whose chemistry is more, you know, will fit with her. And, and then if you ask her which one among all this one you choose, so she may be, say this one, so she will be with that person, inshallah. Yes? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not sure also. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, I heard that even after, um, even all the people that, are, that will be in Hellfire, there will be a time where Allah will just take those people and He will put them in Jannah too. That's correct. That's correct. There will be some people that they will be facing the Hellfire and they will be punished, then they will be forgiven. Okay, because look, every, every deed or every good deed or every bad deed uh, it has a, a level or a value. So some people did this. So they're supposed to be punished for that and then they will be forgiven, right? They will be going to the Jannah. But who would like to be in that? Who would like to go to the hellfire first and you know, get burned? You know, sometimes you just wanna go and see a movie, right? And they say the movie will start at two o'clock. Oh, no, you, you have to wait and you have to probably have 2.15. I can wait. Imagine Jenny would go in there and so it is, it is uh, look, just like if you turn on the oven, you cannot put your finger even for five seconds, ten seconds. No. So imagine you say you're going to do the fire, get burned, get punished with this, that, and then, and you don't know if you are, when are you going to be, you know, forgiven? It will take probably years or, or centuries. You don't know how is that. So, Hadith says, it Try to save yourself from the hellfire, even like with a piece of date that you may give to somebody, subhanAllah. They also be saying, A person that you will be removed from hellfire and the jannah, that is the successful person, inshallah. Okay, I have one more question. It's just, uh, there's a lot of, I don't know, misconceptions or conceptions like that It is correct that it says in the hadith that a half is the person who memorized the Quran, but it's not only the memorization of the Quran. The hadith, if you read the whole hadith, say, uh, that person, he will memorize the Quran, and then he will act upon the Quran, right? So that person, he will be given this chance to have the shafa of 10 of his family, right? But not anybody, if there's some criteria. Because, okay, let's say, just give you an example. Uh, someone who killed, committing this kind of crime, taking the soul of a person, this person cannot be forgiven. Even the hadiths and the ayah talk about this man, uh, that a person who killed a nafs, bari'a, innocent, that person will be in Jahannam khalid al fiha, he will be eternal. Even probably he's a Muslim, but he will be staying there forever. So the shafa in that is not going to help. Because I mentioned before, I said, even the shafa of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, would not be granted to everybody. Some people would not deserve it. And the angels would push them. No, you don't deserve it. You're not, yeah, I know you're not from his ummah. So yes, the people has to have something that, yes, he would be granted the shafa of the Hafiz of Quran, inshallah. But again, even if you say Hafiz of Quran, do you think that Hafiz Quran is definitely going to Jannah? <laughs> no. The 
only people, the only people that we know for sure that they are going to Jannah are the people that Rasulullah mentioned. Like the Ashratul uh, Mubashari in Jannah, Abu Bakr and Umar, Uthman and Ali and Talha and Zubair, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, Abu Ubaidah, Sa'id ibn Zayd, and then Qur'an mentioned, and other say Al Hassan and Al Hussein, Sayyidah Ali in Jannah. Wafatima uh, to say that we say in Jannah, so we know, and the people of Badr and the people that did the bay'ah of Aridwan, uh, so we know all these Sahaba are going to be in Jannah. Anybody else? No, you don't know. Even if you see him praying 24 7, that's not guaranteed that he will be in Jannah. Because a person like the hadith says, uh, you will be doing the, the doing of Ahl Jannah until the last moment, and you will be doing something else and then he will be going to the hellfire. And there is actually the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad in one of these battles that a person was fighting so good that all the people do, wow, look at him. So Rasulullah, he looked at him and said, إِنَّهُ مِنْ أَهْلِ He is from the people of fire, from the Sahaba. They were just like, very. Hey, what, what he's saying, look what he's doing. So, but one of them, subhanAllah, one of the Sahaba, he was waiting until the battle finished. So he went. And then he saw that man. After he finished, he got injured. So when he couldn't be patient, so what he did? He took the sword and he killed himself. And it says very clear that anyone killing himself cannot smell the smell of Jinnah. So he says, Sadaqa Rasulullah. Rasulullah said the truth. Because you see what that person did? It was probably good, very good. And everybody was amazed. But then in the end, it was a bad ending. So that's why even Rasulullah always used to say, Allahumma inni as'aluka husn al khatimah. Oh Allah, give me a good ending, inshallah. We'll end this, inshallah, right? <coughs> okay, thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All right, brothers and sisters, I just uh, remind you guys to go out and sponsor.